Hello, welcome heroes! My name is OmniFlash and today I will tell you all about the perfect waifu class. Yes, there is a perfect waifu class in Perfect World Mobile. Plus, I'm giving away a $25 iTunes or Google Play gift card on September 15, 2019. To enter, all you have to do is like this video, subscribe, click that notification bell, and comment below. And when you comment below, you'll be entered into the giveaway. The cleric is the elven class, which has wings. Yes, the perfect waifu has wings. If someone hurts you, she can heal you. If you're silenced or poisoned, she can purify you. If you need more power, she can buff you. If you die, depending on how much she likes you, she can revive you. But that's not all. If someone's coming to attack you, a big mob of things are coming to attack you, she can also attack. She can summon lightning. She has the power of lightning and wind. Think Storm of the X-Men. She can summon whirlwind. She can summon a tempest. But most of all, she is great at dancing. That makes her the perfect waifu. And today, I'm going to tell you all about her skills the, her skill variety, she is a very diverse character. You can make her more of a support healer or a damage dealer. Check this out and almost tell you how to be a sage or be a demon class. I'm leaning towards sage, but there is one reason why I will probably never be a cleric and that's coming up next. The first skill you get is your basic attack, the plume shot. In other RPGs, you get magic missile. This right here is where you summon feathers, plume, a plume of feathers and shoot your enemies. So I, don't know, I think that's a whole lot better. Your second attack is cyclone. You summon a whirlwind to attack a single target. It also slows them by 30% for six seconds. The next skill is called Thunder, or Wield Thunder, if you've played Perfect World International before. And it lets you channel lightning through your targets. It hits multiple enemies. Tempest is one of your bigger AoE skills. It channels down thunderbolts that shoots a huge area all around you. It's very impressive to see. Does lots of damage. Although it takes a lot of time to cast your Tempest skill. Those are your main attack skills, now we're going to talk about the healing skills. Wellspring is your heal. That is your primary heal. You will be using this as a single target heal for 90% of the time. Ironheart is your regen skill. You should keep this Ironheart, you can stack it up to 3 times on your tank. You should keep it on your tank and on your major damage dealers who can steal aggro. So you stack this on them, it keeps them healthy. Next you have Chromatic Heal Beam. This Heal Beam is an AoE buff plus an AoE heal. It takes a very long time compared to the other heals. So you will want to use Heal Beam when you go into a dungeon or when you start a fight. But those uh, buffs do last 30 minutes. But afterwards it just takes too long to heal. Purify. Purify is your Dispel skill. You use this on your team members whenever they get poisoned, stunned, rooted, whatever. Revive. Revive is an amazing skill. So amazing that they actually put a limit on it. You can only revive a person once every five minutes. You actually revive them from the death and uh, they do not have full health. So you're going to have to heal them back to health after you revive them. Chi Burst uses one Chi, one Spark. That is your Spark skills. It increases your magic attack which also increases your heals and makes you invulnerable for one second. Plume Shell. Plume Shell is exactly what it sounds like. You summon a bunch of feathers, a shield of feathers that absorbs damage and blocks enemies' attacks. God's Wrath, also known as Heaven's Wrath. You summon the powers of the heavens and you channel it. While you're channeling this, you cannot do anything else. So, while in God's Wrath, you do buff all of your teammates' attack speed, skill speed, and cast cooldowns. 
Regenerate. Regenerate is very similar to Heaven's Wrath, except it heals and also gives you a defense buff. You still can't move. Now, Regenerate has a blue aura. Heaven's Wrath has a red aura. This way, your, your teammates know what exactly you are casting. Regenerate and Heaven's Wrath are chi skills. They do take a lot of chi, so you won't be able to keep spamming this skill. You have to know when to use them and use them wisely. Chroma Seal is a debuff skill. You call upon the powers of the rainbows and you put your enemies to sleep. This is a great skill even in PvP, however to make it not way too overpowered, it heals your enemy by 20% every second. So do use this on people with full HP. Sage Cleric and Demon Cleric. At level 69 you can choose to be a Sage of the Heavens or a Demon of the Underworld. Sage makes you the ultimate healer. You can keep your teams alive. In massive PvP play, a Sage Cleric will be able to heal and keep their teammates alive longer. A Demon Cleric is better for a 1v1 PvP. You deal a lot of damage, a lot of disabling abilities. Divine Chi Burst, your first sparse skill, it does make you invulnerable for one second and also heals you, gives you a little bit more healing power. Wings of Protection buffs your Plume Shell skill. So now if you cast Plume Shell, uh, the damage shield on somebody, it also appears on you. It makes it doubly effective. I think it's a great skill. Healing Thunder turns your Thunder skill into a damage plus a healing skill. So it chains your allies and your enemies. It heals your allies and kills your enemies. I don't know how lightning heals people, but hey, I like the skill. Limit Break increases your HP. Odin gives your most your main heal the ability to heal more if your target has low HP. Chromatic Effusion. Chromatic Effusion makes your Chromatic Heal Beam even more effective. Healing Thunder Plus. Healing Thunder Plus allows your Healing Thunder to heal more people and to heal more. Serenity buffs your regen skill, Iron Heart. Nimble Plume lowers the skill cooldown on your damage reduction shield, Plume Shell. Fortified Soul. This allows you to revive somebody faster. It was that you can only revive someone 5 minutes, now you can do it faster. Arcane Empowerment. This gives Chromatic Heal Beam a magic attack buff, making your Chromatic Heal Beam even better. Exalted Renewal also buffs Chromatic Heal Beam, giving you a magic crit buff to all your allies for 30 minutes. Quick Dispel. Quick Dispel turns your Purify skill into a Mass Dispel. You know how usually all your teammates get debuffed at the same time? Now you can purify them all at the same time. Healing Dance gives Chromatic Heal Beam an additional heal to somebody who has the lowest HP as long as it's within the radius of uh, Chromatic Heal. Healing Passage buffs your regular heal wellspring so that it can heal more than one target. All-in-one allows your regeneration aura, the chi skill, to heal even more. Now that is all of the sage skills. We'll be moving on to the demon skill, starting with demonic chi burst. Demonic chi burst gives it uses two sparks, heals you, gives you more magic attack, makes you invulnerable for two seconds. Might of the Blight is what makes you a Demon Cleric. It turns basically all of your heal skills into an attack skill, except for Chromatic Heal Beam. Chromatic Heal Beam turns into a healing aura. I, I don't know how you can heal when all of your skills are, are, are they turn into dealing damage. You got an Iron Heart turns into Consuming Curse. Regeneration Aura turns into Withering Aura. Alright, so Formation Master allows us your... You can actually use skills while using one of your Chi Auras. So you can actually do a lot of 1v1 things. Usually your Withering Aura, uh, your, your Heaven's Wrath Aura, all of these Auras makes you just channel a buff. 
right now as a formation master as a demon cleric you can buff yourself and then just throw nukes and, and damage and lightning and cyclones everybody silent seal allows your chromatic seal to also slow razor feathers make your regular basic attack even more powerful burst of air makes your cyclone attack deal more damage Lightning Zap gives your Lightning Thunder attack an ability to hit two more targets. Channel Lightning reduces the cooldown of Tempest every time you use the Thunder attack. Elemental Seal adds a Magic Defense debuff onto Chromatic Seal. Consuming Hate buffs the damage over time that Consuming Curse does to your enemies. Dimensional Seal adds an additional physical defense debuff onto chromatic seal. There's also a seal explosion, which causes chromatic seal, silent seal, elemental seal, dimensional seal, deal magic damage. And also chromatic seal no longer recovers HP. Now remember how your wellspring heal skill turned into distress? Double winning lets your distress attack hit twice. Chi Shield turns your Plume Shield, which is your damage reduction shield. The Feathers turns into a self-only shield, but it's great for 1v1 PvP and it's great for uh, PvP in general, but it's not good for party play. Resounding Thunder gives your Tempest additional damage and roots your enemy in place. Thunderbolt is a really fun skill. Every time you use Thunder or use Tempest, it builds a stack, a stack of lightning. After you gain five stacks, your next cyclone attack will actually generate a whirlwind that shoots chain lightning from it. This whirlwind will last for six seconds, shooting lightning at all your enemies. It's a very, very cool attack. So in summary, the Sage Cleric is the Team Cleric, Demon Cleric is the Me Cleric. As a Sage Cleric, all your skills does more healing, some of your damage skills even turns into healing skills. And they, all, they still do damage, but they also heal. Sage Clerics are great for massive group PvP and PvE. Now, if you want to be a Demon Cleric, that is wonderful for solo PvP because all your heals for other people turn into buffed heals for yourself. Also, you got your damage shield is also buffed for yourself. A Demon Cleric can also use skills while channeling their auras. So, Demon Clerics can use their best, most powerful skills and also deal damage and cast spells. But there is one reason why I will probably never ever be a cleric, and that is the perfect waifu paradox. If one becomes the perfect waifu, they cannot marry the perfect waifu. Thanks for watching, please check out my other guides and stay tuned for more guides. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and comment below.